DC's music genre lit up the big screen as fans and musicians showed up to take in Straight Crankin', a go-go documentary. We're bringing you all the fanfare behind the big night. And then we're heading out for ice cream, but it's not the kind you might be used to, handmade and frozen right before your eyes. Those stories coming up, the news rundown is straight ahead. We Are Washington starts now. Welcome to We Are Washington. The Legends of Go-Go came out for the premiere of a documentary chronicling the history of the music that is synonymous with DC itself. Straight Crankin' is a first of its kind movie telling the story of Go-Go from the artists that created the sound. We'll bring you behind the scenes as the pioneers of Go-Go watch their story unfold on the big screen at the historic Lincoln Theater. And later, ice cream is making a big comeback in the district. But it's not like anything you've seen before. We'll visit one of the new shops in Adams Morgan that's scooping up on a whole new level at Nice Cream. That's all coming up, but first, here's the news rundown. The Early Childhood Academy Public Charter School in Ward 8 is getting a new home. Mayor Bowser helped break ground on the building that will house the two currently separate campuses. The modernized facility will bring both centers under one roof through the rehabilitation of an abandoned church and construction of a new 30,000 square foot modern addition. What we know that's going to happen here in Ward 8 uh, is that there's a huge investment in new space. And it's nothing like preserving space, adding new space, and making sure that families uh, have more of what they need. The Early Childhood Academy Public Charter School opened in 2005 in the Washington Highlands neighborhood and has been designated as a high-performing school for pre-K through third grade. It's a museum with a mission to strengthen the bonds between police and the community. The new National Law Enforcement Museum held its official ribbon cutting ceremony with lots of high ranking officers and a little help from Dirty Harry himself. Actor and director Clint Eastwood said he was honored to have made a living portraying police officers and getting to know so many of them throughout his career. Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein, former Attorney General John Ashcroft, Mayor Mariel Bowser and former Police Commissioner Charles Ramsey all part of the official opening of the museum that tells the story of American law enforcement by providing visitors a chance to walk in their shoes. You can't help but visit the various exhibits and begin to think about the history of policing during the time in which you served. It also reconnects you to all those that served before you because there's a legacy of service that goes back to the, the founding of this country on up to today. And you learn that and you see that by going through the museum. DC is ahead of the curve when it comes to the development of autonomous vehicles. Mayor Muriel Bowser announced an agreement with Ford Motor Company to develop and test autonomous vehicles. As a part of the partnership with the city, Ford will train DC residents for jobs which include testing, operating, and maintaining autonomous vehicles at the DC Infrastructure Academy. The company plans to begin sending out autonomous vehicles with safety drivers in 2019. The best of what the district has to offer was honored at the 2018 Local First Awards. The awards recognize local independent businesses for their positive impact on the community. Seven winners were selected from 35 finalists, including Glen's Garden Market, Honey Bunny Boutique, and Calabash Tea and Tonic. There's a new job opening in district government, and night owls are encouraged to apply. Mayor Bowser signed a bill introduced by Councilmember Brandon Todd establishing the Office of Nightlife and Culture, focusing on DC's vibrant and creative after-hours economy. I think this is a perfect time for our city. We're growing every single day by leaps and bounds. Uh, we are starting to see activity in places that have in some cases been devoid of any uh, in, in a very long time. And so this Office of Nightlife and Culture will help us be strategic about investments that are made, about government resources. Uh, and it also, we looked at best practices from cities around the world, uh, as well as other cities in our country. The legislation also establishes a commission to advise the mayor and council on policy that impacts nightlife, including bars, clubs, restaurants, 
and sports venues. It was a big night for the D.C. Chamber of Commerce as it marked its 80th anniversary at the annual awards gala. Big Daddy Kane got everyone dancing as the chamber honored the leading businesses in the district. Some of the biggest names in politics, technology, and the arts gathered in Penn Quarter as part of the three-day Atlantic Festival. Hillary Clinton, Kellyanne Conway, and restaurateur Jose Andreas, just some of the big names that were part of the lineup at the 10th Annual Festival, which featured in-depth interviews, discussions on new ideas, and how to tackle some of the bigger issues facing the world today. There's no stopping the H Street Festival. After being postponed due to Hurricane Florence, the biggest neighborhood party in the city went off without a hitch. Thousands of residents filled the 11 blocks of the H Street Festival to enjoy the music, food, fun, and general camaraderie that is the hallmark of the H Street Festival. I think it's just bringing the community all together. There's, you know, we're coming from all different parts and cultures, and I think this is just a really great celebration of all of that. It's a devastating statistic, and an estimated 22 veterans a day commit suicide. But there is hope for those affected by post-traumatic stress. In honor of Veterans Day, the Office of Cable Television, Film, Music, and Entertainment is presenting a PTS awareness special that includes information and resources to remind and encourage vets struggling with PTS that they are not alone. Look for the Veterans with PTS awareness special on DCN this Veterans Day, November 11th and 12th. All right, busy show today, but we do have time for a quick recap of some of the news items. Let's stay right with the PTS awareness special that we were talking about on DCN. Um, had a chance to be a part of that production and see a lot of the stories, hear a lot of the stories. Very powerful stories from the vets and uh, the people who have been around PTS. Um, I thought that I knew a little bit about this topic. I thought that I had some information about it, but it was just, it was really interesting for me how much I learned um, being around it, you know, wh what people are going through and, and what's out there um, to help treat people with PTS. And I think this is gonna be a really helpful um, special, really helpful resource for a lot of people who are actually suffering or might know somebody who's suffering. PTS. I'm really looking forward to seeing that. And I know that for everybody who worked on that special, it was very emotional, yes. very powerful to hear those stories, but also encouraging because there are so many, today there are so many more resources available right. to people suffering with PTS and then there was in the past. And so um, despite the devastating statistics, there is a lot of hope and that's really the message of that special. Yeah. We'll look forward to that. Autonomous vehicles. I found this fascinating because when you think about just how many people are killed or injured in, in vehicle accidents, drug driving, or just, just the kind of accidents that happen every single day, it's amazing to think if we could you know, limit some of that with just really smart vehicles. It will still be weird the day that you see a car driving down the street without a driver behind the seat, I'm sure. But yes. I think that day is closer uh, to us than we probably would imagine. I think that it's great that it's coming to D.C. and it's going to provide jobs for people here A lot in of jobs. Uh, finally, the H Street Festival. <laughs> Cannot stop the H Street Festival. Hurricane Florence came through, they postponed it, but they said we're going to continue and, and have it anyway. It's the biggest block party of the year and they, they carried on and it showed that people really enjoy coming out for that. And I was actually very relieved because you know, you always fear that when you postpone yeah. something that the weather will be bad again. <laughs> I know, right? You know, so you always feel like, you know, they're taking a chance. I know. It could not have worked out better. Gorgeous day right. and packed. Yes, and I always call it, uh, it was the unofficial ending of summer. So summer lasted a little bit longer in DC this year. Yeah, I appreciate that we got yeah. uh, a few extra weeks out of summer. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you to the H Street Festival. That's right. All right, well, still coming. If you missed the premiere of Straight Cranking, you won't want to miss this. After the break, we're bringing you all the sights and sounds from the GoGo -Go Documentary's historic premiere at the Lincoln Theater. And later, something for your sweet tooth, ice cream. See it made and frozen right before your eyes. Stay with us. Welcome back to We Are Washington. We are here at the historic Lincoln Theater for Straight Cranking. First of all, Matt, tell me, what's it like to finally be here? It's been a long time coming. This is great, and uh, you know, I, I feel lucky to be involved in a project like this. You know, there's a lot of heart behind Go Go Music and the people in Washington, D.C., and the people who love this music and are passionate about it. It's the story of our lives for the people who grew up here, who grew up with it. It's how you grew up. It's the way you grew up. Um, and for the people who have just gotten here, they're curious. 
they hear people talking about it all the time, so they want to know what is this thing that you're talking about. So this also is a way, like a primer almost, a rough guide, if you will, okay. for uh, uh, an overview of the history of the scene, the bands in the scene, uh, the important, some of the important moments in the scene. So it just gives you sort of an overview of everything that's gone on in the last 40 years. I hope this will advance the conversation, continue the conversation about where GoGo was, where it is now, and where do you want it to go? You know what I'm saying? Where do you want this to be 10 years down the road? So hopefully this will be the start and the continuation of that conversation. This is a story that's educational. This is something that's going to allow us to continue to have a national platform. It's time for this story to be told. It's long overdue and we're making it happen. And just to be a part of that is amazing to me. Well, as far as I'm concerned, it's about time. And um, I'm, glad, I'm glad because we're telling our story ourselves. No one else is coming in and trying to tell our story. And I think that's the best way that it should be done for us to tell our story. Gogo -Go Music is a part of DC. Go Go Culture is DC. The heartbeat of DC is a Go Go beat. To come back and be a part of something as magnificent as this, to celebrate Go Go and the artists that have been doing it for years, is a great thing. It makes me feel good that people still recognize what we do. It's still marketable and it's still here. And as long as I'm here, I'm gonna keep on trying to get it out there again. It's, it's brought me a lot of joy in my life. I was raised on it. You know, I was. It's 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 life to me. I'm excited about this documentary so everybody can understand the ins and outs of GoGo, -Go, things that they don't know. If you want to be a part of Washington, and at this point after 20 years, I'm hopefully I'm part of Washington, it's part of it and you sort of feel it. And so, you know, having something that provides an opportunity to learn a little bit about what uh, sort of the history of GoGo -Go music has been, how important it is still to this day and where it's going, I think is awesome for the city. I was there through the struggle with hop, just to see how it escalated to this point now. With the Lincoln Theater, with this documentary, it, it, it speaks volumes. I can't wait for y'all to see this movie, man. It's gonna be dope. You been like, come on in, can we get your seat? All the producers, the managers, the artists, the promoters. We could not have done this film without you. I hope that this is as special to you as it has been to us. Thank you for trusting us with your story. I want to officially welcome you to Straight Crankin', a go-go document. Straight Crankin', straight, straight Crankin'. Crank you can see a fit that's be straight Crankin'. Straight Crankin', straight, straight Crankin'. I was so proud to see this. I'm happy I had the opportunity to see it. Bring back a lot of good memories. You don't understand. I don't want you to see my tears. But I got a lot of. <laughs> I thought it was great. I thought it it portrayed Grogo the way it should be portrayed. It was great, and I think that um, it sets the foundation for how things got started, what has happened along the way, and hopefully where we can go in the future. Beautiful. Showcase the city in the top form. I really enjoyed it. I've been talking to people since it cut. People really love how they showcased it. There's a lot of stuff I learned tonight. I absolutely loved it. They got it 100% right, so we really appreciate it. I had a wonderful time. It took me back to my childhood. I love the documentary. I love how it flowed. Good energy the entire time. It represented DC Go Go music the way it should have been represented. This took me a trip back to 11 years old when I first went to go see a Go Go at the Panorama Room. The crowd response was fabulous. I think uh, the producers and OCT FME have a hit on their hands. If you weren't here, you missed something amazing. After the break, I scream, you scream, we all scream for nice cream. We're taking you out for a tasty treat made in a way you've never seen before.
Welcome back to We Are Washington. You know, if you're like me, you take notice when fabulous new ice cream shops open in D.C. In fact, you could say we're undergoing an ice cream renaissance in the district, and that's why we're here at Nice Cream to get the scoop. So we started an ice cream um, a couple of years ago because we loved the idea of being able to make ice cream fresh. Um, so there was very little out there that was freshly made dessert that was crafted right in front of you. So when we discovered liquid nitrogen, we were able to make our ice cream on the spot. We were able to add all fresh ingredients, so like fresh strawberries, fresh peaches, um, real pumpkins, real squashes from the farmer's market, and freeze the ice cream in front of customers, which is really what excited us about the process. How do customers react the first time they come to the store? Um, we love when there's a new customer and there's a little bit of an education process where they're like, where's the freezer? Like, where do I get my ice cream? How do I see it? And so once we walk people through the process and we say, this is fresh milk, cream, and sugar from a grass-fed farm. These are our apples for our apple pie or our pumpkin. We bake these pumpkins and people get super excited. And then the most exciting part is when we freeze it. So we use liquid nitrogen, we pour it in, and then there's a huge, like, um, puff of smoke, I guess, and kids love it. They love to touch it and feel it, um, and they really feel like they're interacting with the person making their ice cream and getting to actually watch this ice cream being made directly in front of them. So I think people are really, really excited. Our ice cream is a lot thicker and denser than normal ice cream. So instead of churning in an ice cream maker for two hours and then sitting in a freezer to harden up, we flash freeze the ice cream within two minutes. So our, there's less air whipped into our ice cream making a denser product and the ice crystals are actually a lot smaller because it's not sitting in a freezer overnight or for months before you eat it. It's actually just frozen right there and served to you. I know you have a lot of interesting flavors and I think that that's one thing, one way in which ice cream has changed is that people actually expect really much more creative, exotic ingredients. Last year we introduced a coconut ash, which was really interesting and fun in that it's completely black, so the ice cream comes out like a dark gray black color and we'd use activated charcoal and coconut. We mix that all in and it's like a kind of summery fruity flavor that's very dark in color and people like that. Um, we have a honey ginger that's really delicious. Um, we use real ginger and steep that into the milk. Um, and a locally sourced honey from Virginia that people love. I definitely think that people are much more interested in a high quality product that is focused on real ingredients. So I do think that the reigniting of excitement for ice cream is around really quality product made with true ingredients. That was so much fun. And you can tell that this is one of those stories where I was looking for a way, you know, how can I be at work mm. and eating a lot of ice cream? I'm and jealous. I found it, yes. I'm jealous <laughs> watching that. And then uh, I didn't get to try any myself, but it looks like a, a, a different type of place. Does anyone get nervous throwing around all that liquid nitrogen while they're making ice cream? I saw they had the pail, they're emptying it in. They, they, they move pretty swiftly when they're doing it. I they mean, do. It's, uh, it's very safe. Yeah. And, and the crafters who make the ice cream do it so much that they're wow. very comfortable. Yeah. In fact, and there is, and there is, you know, an art to it. You kind of have to have a sense of how much liquid nitrogen, depending on the ingredients, right. is going to be appropriate. Right. So um, it's a little bit different than just scooping out some ice cream. It's just as much a show as it is for the ice yeah, cream. Yeah, there's right. some entertainment value there, and it tastes fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, that is all the time that we have today, but we do have time for one last thing. You know, Matt, I know you felt bad did. because you didn't get to go on this shoot, which was so much fun. We were basically just eat, trying all these different kind of delicious ice cream. You find your ways in the, the I, I do, you know, um, but I was able to secure a nice sample wow. just for you. Look at this. And I got the chocolate because, I mean, they have this so many great flavors, but the milk chocolate is fantastic, so I hope you enjoy it. So one last thing today is me getting to eat ice cream. Exactly. So you're going to wrap me up the looking show, out for you. and I'm going to eat ice cream. Yes, you could just, just, you know, I wanted to give you the pint. Wow. You know, and you can, you can off camera, you can just okay. have at it, have the whole pint, nobody, you know, it's legitimate research. This, this looks 
this looks just like regular ice cream. <laughs> like like you would get, you know, in a container at the grocery store. I don't know. Get... Try it. I think right. it's a little bit better as it's we better. Ta as we talked about, you know, um, right. doing the, the process. Um, right there on the spot means that this ice cream is not wow. sitting around. It's it's much more fresh. All the ingredients are fresh, mm. and I think that comes through in the flavor. So, what do you think? Wow! No, it really is. <laughs> There's a lot of flavor in there. <laughs> Good. All right, I'm done. You're okay. Go yeah. The show, right? yeah. Okay. Goodbye. No, really, this is this is fantastic. This is uh, not only does it seem like really, I mean, really, really, it's cold, very rich. Really rich. There is something a little bit different about it with that with that liquid nitrogen, that quick freezing, right? And no calories. I'm sorry, none of you can try this. Yes. <laughs> try it on your own. All right, well, that is all the time that we have today because I have to go finish this now. Uh, but we would like to thank you for hanging out with us, watching the show, and we'd like to encourage you to watch more of our programming, which you can see by searching YouTube, search Entertain DC, go to our playlist and look for all the other features, all the other episodes that we have up there for you. There's a lot to see. See you next time.